Hello, and welcome to this GCSE English Revision video for the poem Aunt Julia by Norma McCain. It will provide you with a summary of its main features and hopefully make writing an exam answer easier. It would be useful for you to have a copy of the poem in front of you. Right, let's get started. Norma McCain is a Scottish poet born in 1910. In Aunt Julia, he is the voice of the poem. And it's about his childhood visits to the north of Scotland to visit his aunt. We assume these visits took place in the late 1910s or early 1920s. The poem is also about Gaelic culture, and this is personified by aunt, his Aunt Julia in the poem. It was an unusual relationship, however, because McCabe did not speak any Gaelic, and his aunt did not speak English, so communication between them was very hard. There are several points to consider in the poem. The first is the location. McCabe's memories give us a visual image of the house his aunt lived in and of surrounding area. The character of Aunt Julia herself is also very important, as are the poet's attitudes towards both her and the location. We will also look at the poem's message, which contains wider points about Gaelic culture in general. And finally, we'll look at the language and structure of the poem, and focus at all times on quotations you could use to support your point, your point in your answer. If you're watching this video because you're about to sit the AQA Spec B English exam, you'll need to show an awareness of cultural references, and these are referred to throughout this commentary. Luskintyre provides the location and setting for Aunt Julia, and this is where McCabe's childhood visits to his aunt took place. It's a very small community on the Isle of Harris, off the coast of northwest Scotland. Being an island makes it very quite remote and isolated, as you can see here on this map. And it's far from more highly populated towns and cities. So what is this location like? Well, we learn that it's rural and agricultural. We understand this through the way Aunt Julia's foot is described as stained with peat which is a natural earthy substance used as a fuel. There are also references to peat scrapes and lazy beds, both localised language. Lazy beds are trenches dug in the ground for growing potatoes, so this location demands an outdoor agricultural lifestyle. And peat scrapes is an area where peat has formed and you go to collect it. It's very exposed and remote location because of the absolute darkness in the cave mentions. There are no big sources of light nearby, which would illuminate the light, the light like in larger towns. This makes the place seem very, very isolated. It's exposed to the elements as well as McCaig mentions winds pouring wetly around house ends. At certain times of the year, we can expect this location to receive some pretty wild weather. We also visualise it being by the sea, as there is reference to Aunt Julia's seagull's voice, so it's loud and boisterous, and McCaig mentions her sandy grave, suggesting she's buried near the coast. The character of Aunt Julia is presented through a series of small images which, put together, build up a much more vivid picture of this person. First, we learn that she speaks Gaelic, a language derived from Celtic dating back to around 1000 BC. The Celts were the original native Britons who were pushed to the extremities of the British Isles by various invading forces. Other languages derived from Celtic can be found in Cornwall, Wales and Ireland. Gaelic is found in Ireland and parts of Scotland, including Luscontyre. We get the impression that Aunt Julia is very, very lively as she speaks loud and fast. This explains why she has the seagull's voice later in the poem. Very chatty, very loud, very boisterous. She's a rugged, outdoor person, as she often went barefoot, but she's not very ladylike and doesn't seem bothered about getting her hands dirty and doing manual work. She is strong and masculine instead, as she wore men's shoes and had a strong foot. She's therefore not the stereotypical woman, has more manly attributes almost. However, she is also very skilled at making clothes, which is a much more feminine image of her. She drew yarn marvellously out of the air, suggests she is some sort of magician. She is also energetic, and we get this impression from two metaphors used by McKay, water flouncing and winds pouring. Both flouncing and pouring are very active words full of energy. It could also be said that he found her a bit eccentric, as she was the keeper of threepenny bits in a teapot, a bit of a strange place to keep your loose change. Most people keep it in a piggy bank. We learn that she is self-sufficient, as we've already mentioned, she makes her own clothes and grows her own food. In terms of appearance, she's very plain, and another simple metaphor, she was black skirts, is used to describe this. She wasn't into wearing garish or bright clothing, and her appearance wasn't important to her. The final thing we learn is that she is now dead, as she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. Notice the repeated use of the S sound, or sibilance, to create the hush and quiet of the grave. There is a range of evidence which explains the poet's attitudes. First, there is evidence of love. There are many little details about Aunt Julia which put together as a picture show that he was very, very fond of her indeed. He felt respect. Hers was the only house. He felt comfortable in complete darkness. He admired her, and we get this from the reference to her magical skill again with the thread while using the spinning wheel. 
Next, there is an element of regret felt by McCaig, and this is where we start to get closer to the message of the poem. By the time I had learned a little Gaelic, she lay silenced and getting angry with so many questions unanswered. Here there is a sense of regret because she died before he got really to communicate and talk to her, leaving both of them with unanswered questions about the other. Finally, there is the sense of McCabe's nostalgia about his arm and the location because the poem is written in past tense and features lots of little memories. The poem's message can be uncovered if we treat Aunt Julia's death as a metaphor. With her death, McCabe found himself getting angry with so many questions unanswered. This shows his frustration that her gay culture and heritage died with her. Because McCabe and his aunt were frustrated by their inability to talk, she died before she could pass on her knowledge, culture and language. For us, it leaves us asking questions about, of ourselves. Who do we need to ask questions of before it's too late? Let's finish by looking at some of the key points of language and structure in the poem, which you could mention in your exam answer. The poem, like most of the free release booklet, is written in free verse. This means the poem has no regular rhythm or rhyme scheme and allows McKay to write it more like a personal history or an obituary for his aunt. It's written in the first person so that the reader understands this is the poet's very own personal experiences. The poem contains a series of snapshots or images from McCabe's childhood memories. As we've mentioned before, there are many of these little images, but each one, and each one is not very detailed, but put together, we get a much more vivid picture of his aunt. Lastly, McCabe uses simple metaphors to help us understand what his aunt was like. She was buckets and water flouncing into them. She was winds pouring wetly round houses, convey her energy, and she was black skirt, brown eggs. Suggests she was plain and simple, not into extravagance. The poet uses simple language, but the metaphors build a vivid picture as we read. We really hope you found this video useful. Please feel free to leave constructive comments on its page on YouTube, and keep checking the Porter to School YouTube channel for more helpful advice to help you improve your English exams. All the staff here wish you the very best of luck.